All right, let me start over again. So welcome to today's Zoom meeting on Google Classroom, Next Steps. Um, I just want to um, introduce you to our presenters today. I'm Kelleth Chin, I'm the, the OUSD um, Coordinator of Instructional Technology, and Sam Solomon, you might know. Uh, she is teacher librarian at Life, so hi, Sam. And hey. Sam is going to be nice. doing most of the presenting today, but I'm just going to jump in a little bit. I just want to say a couple of words before we get started. Um, yes. Okay. So, so make sure that you are I'm muted. Item, but, you know, we'll just. Yeah. I think somebody's got a microphone on there. So make sure that you're muted. I'm just going to go through and mute a couple Trial. of people here. So we don't have any extra noise there. Uh, so just want to launch a poll actually. So I'm gonna launch a poll and this is about which statement describes your experience with Google Classroom. So I'm launching that right now. So go ahead and answer that while we're getting ready to get started. Um, so one thing we've been talking about as we're planning webinars and trainings is the fact that um, we're get, actually getting close to the end of the school year. We've got about five weeks left. So introductions to new platforms for distance learning might be less helpful to you. So we're thinking, let's start working on skills and tools that we can take beyond the school closures. Um, Google Classroom is going to continue to be available to you as long as you're an OUSD teacher. And the way that you use it for distance learning is probably specific to this situation right now, but there are a whole lot of ways that you can use Google Classroom in a regular school situation that can help you work more efficiently and help you add more engaging tools to your instructional toolbox. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of those today. And we're actually covering a lot of tools and strategies. So just think of this meeting as an overview and an intro. And we are sharing the slideshow link with you. So you can take your time with the resources that are embedded in each slide if you are on that slideshow. And then also don't forget, you can go back and view the recording of our meeting later on at your own pace, okay? So for the live participants, just be aware that we don't have the Q&A feature in our meeting format today. So as we're presenting, just type your questions in the chat and we're compiling those and we'll circle back to answer those at the end. Sam is actually going to be doing most of the presenting today and I'll just jump in for a couple of topics. Um, so please do remember if you have come in recently, remember to mute yourself, hearing a couple of um, microphones with some background noise. So we appreciate that if you can mute yourself. Sometimes there's stuff going on in your homes or wherever you are. So go ahead and mute your microphones. And I'm gonna end this poll now and let's just share the results. So you can see that looks like part of the, the option there is cut off, but it looks like the majority of people have just started re recently using Google Classroom during the closures. So um, this is, fantastic fantastic uh training for you today the things that we'll be talking about okay so i'm um, just going to go ahead and turn it over to sam now so take it away sam all right hi um am i on mute am i good yes okay um so just really quickly this is sort of the overview of what we're going to talk about today so we're, these are sort of all of the different parts of google classroom that we're going to cover we're assuming that you have set up your google classroom that maybe you're already using it a little bit with students that you've probably posted some assignments so we're not going to talk about like those very very basic startup things um if those are the things that you want to see there's the um webinar that's on um OUSD's Teacher Central, which I do just quickly want to show you. Um, just as a reminder, I really like to give this reminder, is that if you are in need of support with Google Classroom or with anything, um, on the very front page of Teacher Central, you can sign up for uh, distance learning office hours with Kelleth or with myself, and we're super happy to provide that one-to-one -one help. Um, and if you click on webinars, you can go back and see all of our recorded webinars, including the original Google Classroom training. Um, so there's lots of help content there on Teacher Central for you to access. And I see lots of people on the slides, which is awesome. If you are feeling stressed about getting there, that link is on each and every slide. Um, so don't, don't be scared. Um, it'll be up. 
So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to schedule posts. Um, I made this slideshow sort of with the vision that you would use it and interact with it. So I do hope that you open it and find it because this video is going to show you how to schedule posts. Um, you can check out Google's help content by clicking on the link. It's meant to be interactive. So you might want to schedule posts if like me, you kind of typically do all of your planning for the week, um, like on Sunday or over the weekend. And so you can schedule out the posts so that they go up at the date and time that you want. You can schedule a post for assignments, for quizzes, and for materials. Um, I can model really quickly how that looks. It's pretty easy. Um, so I'm just going to go to my Google Classroom that I'm using with teachers at my site. And this is my kind of my class stream page. Class stream page. And so I'm just going to type, hey, here's a fake announcement. Fake announcement. And then right next to where post is, there's a little down arrow and I can choose schedule, and I can choose what day and what time I wanna do it at. It's super handy and super easy. Um, next, Kels is gonna talk about using Google Forms as quizzes. I already saw that we did have a question about that in the chat. Okay. Great, so if you don't mind um, stopping your screen share, thanks Sam, and I'm going to share my screen in just a second to get started here, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, about using Google Form quizzes in Google Classroom, which is actually a great feature. So, just wanted to show you a little bit about that, how that works. On the slide that that uh, that we're actually on right now, there is a, a video that shows you about how to do that. But this is just a little bit of a an overview here. So, this right now, what we're looking at here, this is a quiz that I created and just going into editing mode so you can just see what it looks like in the editing mode. And if you go to the settings there, this is the key thing here, this setting under quizzes, when you turn on make this a quiz, mm -hmm. that puts you in quiz mode there, okay? So mm -hmm. this is a quiz, this is about parts of speech here. And when you're in editing mode, you can choose your options there. And the answer key, when you click on that, that lets you choose what is the right answer there. And you can also, work on your, your scoring system there. <laughs> so no. and remember to, no. I'm just going to hey, pause. I just clicked on, they're having a webinar right now. It's just called pausing um, just for a Google second. Classroom Next Steps. And the first person, the first person that second. I see in your face is the music teacher. So just want to remind, just want to remind everyone that um, you should be muting. So if you, if you got on recently, make sure that you're, that you're muting yourself or that you're um, turning off your microphone. Okay. So, just want to go into, so this is right here that we're in Google Classroom. And I just want to show you about how you would add a quiz or you can even create, uh, create a quiz directly in there. So you go to create, and then right now, I'm gonna to go to quiz assignment. If you click on that, then that just opens up a blank quiz. So it's basically an assignment, but it just automatically adds one of those blank quizzes right there, okay? But I'm going to, just go in and use the quiz that I already created. So I'm going to assignment and then I will go to my, just title that quiz just really quickly, go to my Google Drive and, and then I've got my, uh, my quiz on parts of speech right there. That adds it right there. Grade importing is already turned on. So that means that the grade will automatically be added to the Google Classroom if you have grading set up. And just to show you quickly how that works, we go to quiz, open that up, and then there's a button up on the top right for import grades. So you just click on that. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna stop my share and if you don't mind putting that slide back up just for a moment, Sam. No problem. So just was mentioning that is an embedded video. That's actually a video that I created with just more, um, just kind of a more in-depth um, overview of, as far as creating a quiz with Google Forms. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Sam now. Right on, Kelly, you're so thorough. I did not make my own videos for this. 
<laughs> so another option of how you might use uh, Google Classroom is using HyperDocs. So HyperDocs are just like a tool that you could use when you're creating assignments in Google Classroom. It's sort of like if you were to take all the components of your lesson and sort of put them together in a hub for kids to access. So for, I know that for myself, I designed a professional learning arc for teachers at my site. All right. And, and, so I, and I used um, right. HyperDocs to do it, where it was like sort of a guided learning process, where it's like you start at the top of the page, you watch a video, you read a thing, you answer some questions, you use Flipgrid. Um, and so HyperDocs are meant to be sort of like a hub for students to do, you know, these are, this is all of the activities for the week, or this is all of the activities in that lesson arc. Um, they're customizable for students as well. So that means that you can offer like differentiated opportunities with them. Um, really good hyperdocs are gonna offer opportunities for collaboration, offer opportunities for choice. Um, something that's been coming up a lot at my site recently is uh, giving students sort of a tour. So when you post the assignment, you can also post a tour and it's also an opportunity to collaborate when we're talking about like sort of what is a hyperdoc, I'm just gonna click on an example really quick because I think it'll help clarify. I did not make this example. Um, this example actually came from the Cult of Pedagogy article that I linked. Uh, this is, so this is like a road trip of the United States kind of hyperdoc. That's the theme of it. And the idea is that you, you know, start by watching this video. And when you click on the video, it's a video, right? And you jot down some notes Take here. Um, look at this photo essay, jot down some notes, look at this slideshow, make some notes. Um, and so it's sort of guiding students through the whole process. It's a lot more self-directed um, and it has sort of multimedia links. Um, on the slideshow, I put in three different examples um, and I put in three different templates that you could use to create something like this um, and then post in your Google Classroom. I just want to name, you can use docs, you can use slides, you can integrate all of your whatever ed tech apps are working for you in your class right now. And I included these articles that I sort of drew these materials from. And if you only read one article about hyperdocs, I would really recommend the Cult of Pedagogy article. Um, it's really excellent. And you can use these templates to sort of, you know, create this arc for your students. Um, and then, so now sort of like shifting back into like Google Classroom tools, um, you can return work and give feedback. This was a question that's actually come up for a lot of staff members at my site um, about returning work, like what does it mean? So when we give, when we are grading in Google Classroom, you can give like a numeric feedback, like seven out of 10. Um, engaging in comments is another option, and both of those things will show up in the gradebook. And when you return an assignment, the thing that is different about it is students can edit it again. So you can send an assignment back to students, um, and you can uh, ask them to revise. And so what that looks like is, in my distance learning classroom, uh, I can go to classwork, or sorry, grades. Um, and you can return individually assignments. I guess I should hide the names of the grownups at my school, I don't know. Um, you can, or you can batch return them. So if you click at the top, you can return them all to people. Or if you want to just return them individually, you can return them individually. Um, Okay. Better for you. Bye. Um, I also want to talk about originality reports. That's another form of feedback that Google Classroom offers. So it's very similar to Turnitin. I saw there were a few high school teachers on here. Um, so maybe you've used Turnitin. Originality reports look for kind of like they kind of scan the internet to look for matches to your students' work. Students can run them though, which I think is really cool. Um, students can run it up to three times before turning it in and use that feedback to make changes to their work. 
In OUSD, we have a version of Google Classroom that allows us only to do it for three assignments, though. Um, so you can only use originality reports three times, so kind of being judicious about how you want to use them and when you want to use them. How you do it is you'll go to your Google Classroom, not Teacher Central, um, and you go to Classwork. When you create the assignment, um, oops. Uh, you just enable originality reports here. I'm not going to do it because I want to save my three in case I need them. Um, but that's how you enable them. It just comes up right in the beginning of the assignment. And just like you can schedule posts in your class, you can also schedule assignments. Um, I just wanted to point that out as well. Um, oh, also using topics. So our, I think our Google Classrooms, at least if yours is like mine, it's starting to get really hectic particularly in the class stream, right? Because every single thing that we're posting is showing up there. Um, so using topics will help kind of organize your class uh, and make it like a little less stressful to look at. So for example, um, I have these topics that I've created in my Google Classroom. So I have RPD, I have feedback, I have assessment, I have uh, sort of each Kind of arc I was covering in this PD that I was organizing for my site. You might use it differently, like your topics might be the units or modules that you're looking at, or like the week, so like the week of April 20th to 25th, um, or anchor readings or themes, and you can also create a topic for course materials, like if you have a grid that you use for Flipgrid, or if you have a syllabus that you wanted to post. And again, how you do that is all created here, um, but when you're creating an assignment. So I can go back up here to my assignments and I can edit this one. Um, when you're creating it, you have the option of adding or creating a topic as you create the assignment. And that also is in this video here and it's also in this help content here. Um, kind of thinking about our class stream. I don't know about you, but my class stream was starting to get really overwhelming. Um, and so if you want to sort of push students to look at the classwork tab to see their classwork instead of sort of relying on that cluttered up stream. Um, I'm going to close this because I keep accidentally clicking on it. Um, you can change your class stream so that it only displays announcements and like materials basically so you can see in my class stream there's not announcements these are just like comments from teachers that i work with um, or uh, materials that i've posted myself so to do that um, you go to your settings is that true i hope it's true um, yeah and you can hide the classwork notifications on class streams so you can decide what goes on there i've hidden my notifications so that it's um, just announcements and kind of posts. I've enabled posts for teachers in my distance learning classroom. So to clean it up for your students and sort of push your students to look for classwork information on the classwork tab, where hopefully you've also organized it with topics and it's really easy to find everything. Um, something new that is sort of recently been added to Google Classroom as they've integrated Google Hangout and or slash meet with Google Classroom. Um, so your Google Classroom now has the option to enable like a specific meet link that will be on the stream page and on the classwork page. And it's a reusable link. So you can say, oh, every Wednesday when we have our class meeting, you'll just go to Google Classroom and you'll click on the link. For me, this immediately was like, oh my God, they can just be in a Google Hangout without me. Oh no, what will happen? Um, but how they've set it up does not allow students to be in the meet without you. So they can't open it until you're there and they can't access it until you're there. And once you leave, no more people can join. This playlist on YouTube is really, really useful for explaining some of the ways that you can use Google Meet with your class and also how you enable it. I really recommend it. It's a really good playlist. Um, but also Google's help content is here. One of the things that has come up is maybe the need to remove people from a, a Google Meet. Um, if we have students who are not taking it seriously, uh, you can, there's also help content about how to do that here. 
I don't have it enabled in my class right now, but if I did want to enable it, I would click on that settings wheel again, and I can enable the meet link by making it visible to students. And once I do that, and it saves, it shows up right here, right underneath my class code. Um, and if I decide, oh no, actually I hate this, and I wanna turn it off, I can go back to that settings wheel in the top right corner, and I can just toggle it off again and click save. And now it's gone. Um, so that's also another way that you can um, use Google Meet with your class. Kelsey, are you talking about questions or am I? Um, I believe you are. Excellent. Questions in Google Classroom are another option to solicit student voice. I know that that's something I feel like lots of the staff members that I'm talking with at my site we're all trying to figure out how to get our students' voices in our class because that's like the best part of our classes, right? Um, so questions is another way that you can do that. You can post questions um, to check in with students, to have sort of discussion type questions. Um, you can, they give you two formats for questions, a short answer and multiple choice. Um, and you can enable or disable students responding to each other's questions. And that's like really about what is, like a little bit about what your purpose is and then also about what you know, makes you comfortable. Um, so if I wanted to post a question, I would go to classwork and I would click create and I would choose question. Um, and I would put my question here. How's it going? It's a really good question. Um, and I put it as a short answer question, but I could change it to a multiple choice question. Um, if I wanted to, right, you could certainly attach like a YouTube video and, and ask them a video about that question. You could attach an image like as a file or as a link and ask them about that image. Um, but the settings that I wanna mention, right, is like you can of course change the points, everything's ungraded, you can change the due date, you can attach it to a topic so that it shows up in your class classwork tab like with the topic that it belongs with and is organized and you can enable or disable students replying to each other with just a single click. Um, you can also enable or disable students editing their answers. Um, so that's another way that you can sort of invite students to participate in your class in a sort of short way. Sam, would you mind going back to the, um, there's the slide on Google slideshows? Yeah. How did I miss it? So weird. Number seven. That's okay. Sorry about that. So um, I, I wanted to mention something about um, creating assignments with Google Slides. This is actually a, a really great way to engage students. Students really like it a lot. So as an assignment, students can actually create their own slideshows to show what they've learned. And one way that you can do this, which is which makes it a lot more structured, is to create a template in Google Slides and then make a copy for each student in a Google Classroom assignment. And it, it's, you can encourage students to be creative. They really enjoy doing that a lot of times, so adding their own images or students love use, you know, choosing their own fonts and colors and they can even do animations as well. So I attached a couple of templates in there, but I just want to show those to you. So if you don't mind stopping your share for just a second there, Sam, I'm going to do mine and I'm going to just share, just show that to you, like how that works a little bit. So this is one of my classrooms here and let's see, oops, I just went too far. Sorry. So this is, one of my classrooms, so I'm gonna to go to classwork and show you how this works. So I'm gonna to go to create, and then assignment. I'm gonna to go to assignment, I'll just type in a title quickly for this, and I'm using some material from a sixth grade work packet here. So I'm gonna add the slideshow that I created. So I have that in my Google Drive, and it's called coronaviruses, and it's just a very, it's actually a very simple, slideshow, but I'll just show you what it looks like quickly. So I've got directions on the, the top there. The, the students will end up um, deleting that before they turn it in. And then on each slide of this, the following five slides, there's a question. And so students, they just add their own text in the text box so they can answer the question and then they'll turn that in. Okay. So one thing to 
one thing that's really important when you do this is that there's a setting in Google Classroom, okay? Because right now students can view the file. That means they can only view it, but we want each student to have their own copy. So you click on that and click make a copy for each student, very important, and then assign it. And then each student has one. This is another second grade. I just want to show you this. This is something fun that you can do. Um, this is for second grade and um, money counting is a big thing, knowing coins and bills. So you can actually have objects off to the side there. And so this is designed just to have students show that they know how to count coins and count money so they can just drag stuff on there. And then when they go to present, when they're ready to, to show it and then do present, and then it's just kind of like a nice animated slideshow that shows their work. And there are different ways to make those amounts, but it's really cool. That's one uh, idea as far as how you can make that. So I've got both of those slideshows, uh, those templates in there. If you do want to use those or modify those, I'm going to stop my screen share, but if you do want to, would you mind putting that slide back up, Sam? No problem. If you do want to use those, then just you're going to click on it and you're just going to have the original, um, my original version, which is view only, but then you just go to file, make a copy. And if you want to modify that, um, then you can do that. Okay. So that's it for um, creating assignments, assignments with Google Slides. Did we have anything else that we needed to talk about, Sam, before we get to questions? No, and actually that's a really good lead in to a question that came up. Somebody was asking about how you assign a, a how do I send a doc to students so they can do the assignment and on the doc and submit it. And that's sort of what you were just modeling. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we answered that question. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just, I was just reading one, one of the questions here. What was the, what was the question? It was how to send a doc to students so they can do the assignment on the doc and submit it. Um, how to send the doc to, to a student. How, so do you want to answer that question? Sure. I'm not sure. Um, so if I'm creating an assignment, um, I'm going to edit this. Oh, I have to move my chat window. Um, I'm going to edit this assignment. Um, if I'm using, I can add, click add and I can go into my Google Drive and I can add the doc that I want them to, to edit, whether it's slides like Kellis was just modeling um, or something else. So if I have this like parabolas situation, I get to also choose. Students can view the file. So that's just, they can look at it. They can't edit it or change it. Students can edit file. This one, be careful with, because it means every student is going to edit the exact same file, which sometimes you want. It's actually a great opportunity to like invite kind of digital conversation and collaboration, but it might not be what you're actually looking for. Um, if you click make a copy for each student, when they open it, that's how you edit it or you send them a doc or slides or whatever that makes the copy for them to edit. And then when they're all done with the assignment, they'll click turn it in and that'll submit. Um, sorry, I'm also scrolling in the questions. Yeah, so I um, actually, maybe we can just officially go over to um, go over to questions. So I did, if you've got that Google doc, I'm sharing a Google doc with Sam right now just to make sure that we've got all of our questions in here so we can start going through those. So um, let's see. Um, I see the question about Newzella and the Newzella gradebook. Mm -hmm. I believe you have to export it from Newzella. Okay. Yeah. The question is, I've used Newzella to assign reading quizzes, writing, but the completed work only shows up on Newzella, not on Google Classroom. Is there a way to see the completed work? on Google Classroom? Unfortunately, no. When uh, there are, Newzella is one of those um, content area programs that integrates well with Google Classroom, but not so much that you can actually check the work from within Google Classroom. You can assign it a lot of times um, from those kind of programs, but you have to go back into the program to actually look at the work. You can share the assignment to Google Classroom. Though. Yes, yeah, so you can assign, you can share while you're in Newzella, um, that's one of the things you can you can share the assignment. But that, um, yeah, looking at it while you're in Google Classroom is unfortunately not available. Okay, let's see. So we've got, I'm just shifting up to the top here, Sam. I'm new to Google Classroom and I've had trouble 
transferring documents from illustrative mathematics to my Google Classroom. I think the lessons are visible to students, but discovered at least with some students that they are unable to access the lessons. What am I doing wrong? I'm not sure about that. That's, I'm not that familiar with, with IM, but that's something that I can check in with about, um, with our, um, with, with our math team about that. Can we, you, could you say what grades this is applicable to? How do we make sure docs we attach can be written on by the kids? Okay. So two separate questions. So I would say that, uh, you know, I used Google classroom with, with my second graders and they were able to use it. It is a little trickier, you know, with distance learning right now, because not all students they have the, the support. Sometimes they need support to be able to get into Google Classroom to make it work. But in general, um, younger kids can definitely use it. Definitely third, fourth, fifth graders can, sometimes younger. Um, how can we make sure, how do we make sure the docs that we attach can be written on by the kids? So that's that, um, the trick that, that Sam was showing as far as make, make a copy for each student. That is really, really important step. When you're assigning the work, anything that you are attaching, any kind of Google Doc or Google Slides, anything like that, you need to make sure that you make a copy for each student in the assignments, okay? I'm a prep PE teacher who has created my own page, but I need to assign classwork to multiple Google Classrooms. What's the most efficient way to do this? So I could just do like a, a very quick, and I, I remember, if I can remember, there's another question that's kind of related to this about when to assign. Mm. So I just want to share that. So I'm going to go back to my Google Classroom just for a second. And so I've got an assignment that's up right now, okay? So this is, I haven't even given this anything, but I just want to show you over here. So when it says four, actually, let me just close that so I can kind of start from the beginning. Create assignment okay and then i've got an assignment here maybe this is going to be like google doc whatever it is and then over here on the right you've got when if you click on this then you can see if you have more than one class you've got multiple classes i've got a whole bunch of classes so you can choose which classes you want to assign this to okay and you do also have the option to assign only to certain students if you want to okay and there was another question down below about can you schedule posts for, um, for individual classes, for different classes. And yes, you can. That's a, a place that you can do that here. As far as scheduling different dates for different classes, I'm not sure about. Maybe you, you would probably need to do a separate assignment. I think that would be the best way to do that. But for this one, you can select a due date for specific classes. And I hope that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the, I'll just keep this up right now so you guys can see the, uh, the questions also. If you um, are not muted right now, just remember to mute yourself. All right. Um, I found the original Google Classroom video very difficult. It has multiple platforms introduced, not a great deal of nuts and bolts about posting and editing in the classroom. Is there a better one available that's more exclusive to Google? classroom introduction and beginning users. Um, I think Sam, you actually, you, you addressed that in the chat. So there, there are, are a lot of, of resources for that. Did you want to address that? Yeah, there's like basically 1 million YouTube videos right now about how to use Google Classroom and a lot of them are really good. One thing I will point out is that in 2019, Google Classroom had a big kind of like uh, user interface shift. So if you're looking at a video Make sure that it's after 2019 or later is better, um, sort of generally as a rule right now with Google Classroom. The other thing is that Google's help content, it's support.google.com, um, is really, really good. And I, I use it frequently myself. Okay. Great advice. Yeah, a lot of YouTube videos. And then if you if you do need to, if if you need personal help, remember that Sam and I are, are available for one-on-one -on -one consultation. If you go to Teacher Central, I think I've got the Teacher Central tab up here. You can go to Teacher Central and make an appointment with one of us that will just click onto a link to easily find an open spot that we've got and we can have a 15 minute or so conversation with you. Okay. Yeah, and also on Teacher Central is, a, is help content that we've also curated. Yeah, that's true also. So just taking a quick look at that. So any of the online programs 
We've been trying to organize these a little better. If you've got questions about Google Classroom, there's a lot that's there. This is another um, get started video. This is kind of short. If you want just something that just that's a little shorter, that's just about Google Classroom, but we do have a lot of, when you click on any of these icons or links right here, Sam's done a great job just adding a lot of content here. So you can take a look at that. So Teacher Central's also a great resource if you want something that's a little bit more OUSD specific. Kellis, could you please go back and show okay. how you accessed that? How you get there? Okay. Yeah, go yeah back. sure. That Google Classroom icon, how did you access it? Okay, let me just start from the beginning. So teachercentral.ousd.org. Okay, so click on, on that and then you'll get to the home page of Teacher Central. All right. And then we've got under, basically you've got two ways you can get there. You can go to online programs or there's also under distance learning, there's online programs. So you can click on each, either one of those online programs. And then you just have all of these icons here. This is, these are kind of like the big organizers and clever. And then these are kind of like the more content area or more specific programs. Okay, so teacher central and then look for online programs. All right, and then just gonna go back to the questions here. I'm a newbie to Google Classroom. When creating assignments, do you have a suggestion on how to view it from the student's interface from receiving to grading? I understand that the rosters are generated through areas so we cannot create a sample student. So the best way to, I, I think the question is, how do you kind of see the student's view? You, is that the, 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 am I understanding that correctly? So there is, there's no way to do that from your own account. If you really feel like you, you need to do that, I would not recommend like doing it often, but you can sign as, in as a student. You do have the access to signing into Google Classroom as a student, but just, just to out of respect for students, just do that uh, very sparingly if you need to, okay? Um, so if a student did a good job, I should not return it. Will they see the comments and the grade? Do you want to, to take that question, Sam? Yeah, you can return it. They will see the comments and the grade. Either way, when you return it, they get a notification, which is nice um, to just say like, hey, this assignment has been returned. This is your grade, this is your comment. So it might help them know to look at it. Um, but it's sort of your decision how you want to play that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this question about you can't schedule posts for multiple classrooms, can you? I went over that just a little bit before and showed you how you can actually do that. You just go to, over to the, it's, you're in the right panel there and you can ch do the scheduling bit here and then select individual classrooms here. And that's the same way that you would assign something to multiple classes as well. You can create an assignment for multiple classes if you check more than one box. Yes. But if you check more than one box, more than one class, it doesn't give you the option to schedule. Oh, is that right? Hmm, yeah, okay. so what I've told teachers at our site to do is to uh, save it as a draft mm -hmm. and then on the day you want to assign it, click your multiple classes and then assign oh, it all. Okay, I'm seeing here, I'm not, I don't know if, it, if it's, if I'm having a different experience here, but I've selected three classes and then, and then, uh, and then I've selected a due date and time and then maybe, when you go oh yeah, you're right. Well, you can't. You can't actually click on on the assignment there. So I guess the workaround would be to just individually assign those. So thank you for pointing that out. Could you also reuse the post if you don't want to like? You could reuse the post. So let's just, yeah. So let's talk about that quickly. So let me just kind of finish up this. Let's see. Sample assignment. Okay, I'll assign that right now. There's actually nothing in there at all, but I think it'll be there. No grade category. That's okay. Okay, and. Let's just go into, it's assigning right now. Sometimes it takes a few seconds, Google Classroom. Go to create and then reuse post, okay? So I'm actually in another classroom right here. So I'll go back, it's gonna select the class that I want. That is my third grade class. And then there's my sample assignment. So if I click on that and I reuse, I'm reusing that post and then looks like then now I can get to a different classroom here and should be able to assign that with the due date. And then, yes, now I've got the assign there. So that's a good workaround there. 
so thank you for that question and for letting me know that's actually not possible. And thank you, Sam, for offering that workaround. Um, let's see, so where were we on the questions here? Can we hide old assignments? I actually got that question recently and the answer is, the, sh the short answer is no. Um, you cannot archive, let's just open up Google Classroom one, once again. You cannot actually hide or archive old assignments. Um, so one workaround that I suggested is that what you could do is you could create a new classroom that's, that's specifically for archiving and then go to that new classroom and reuse the post. So essentially you'll be pulling anything that you want that you want to hide. You can pull that into your archive classroom and then delete it from your original classroom. Okay, so that's one way that you could do that. You could also just create a Google Doc if you have, if it's basically just materials or links or something like that, you could create a Google Doc, just like uh, copy all of your links into that Google Doc. So those are two workarounds to get around that limitation. Okay. Um, how can I send a doc to students so they can do an assignment on the doc and submit? So I think we, we addressed that before. Just remember that you, when you are making when you're making an assignment that has, um, let's see, so we've got like a, is this is a hyperdoc here. So I'm gonna view this, I'm gonna edit the post actually. So just remember that when you, when you add something, when you add something from a Google Drive and you want everyone to write on it. So let's see, I've got this, I'm just gonna choose like something here, I've got like a, some kind of a Google Doc here. I'm going to add this, all right. And then you want I can't. I don't think I can actually do it now that I'm editing this this right here. But I'm going to create something new with Google Docs here. So this is a new Google Doc, okay. And then what you want here. I don't know if I'm in the. Am I in the wrong place here? Or this is all for for all students? Then what you want. I'm not seeing the the normal the normal. Um, options that I see. But basically, I think it's because I was trying Laura to get said in the chat, way. it's as a material, not an, as an assignment. Oh, it's a material. That's right. I needed an assignment. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Appreciate that. Okay. So, and I want the, the classwork there. I need an assignment. Okay. I've got an assignment. Let me view the assignment. And let's see. I'm just doing this all wrong here. So, let me just you go know, back public in. learner is really hard. Yeah. I'm gonna, so it's the assignment that I wanted, not material. And let's see, when I create a new doc. And then I go back, here we go. This is what you want here. Not students can view file, but make a copy for each student. Really, really important if you want each student to be able to write uh, on, on your document there, okay? On their own, on their own thing. Okay, I think we're almost at the end of the questions. Let's see. Do all students have internet access or will they soon? That's something that's being worked on right now. You can check for updates on uh, Google Classroom. Do we also, I think we sent an update about that in the, the Teacher Central uh, newsletter about that. Um, so we're, we're working on that. We know that not all students have devices right now and we know that not all students have even bigger problem is internet access. So we are trying to, we're working with donors, we're working with the city uh, to try to get um, hotspots or connect families with internet. Is there a Google Draw capability in Google Classroom or Photoshop like capability in Google Classroom? I would say that you would wanna use a Google Doc for that. Does that sound right, Sam? Use a yeah, Google Doc for that the, and then, and the Google Doc has Google Draw capability. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, that's exactly right. But um there's no Photoshop type feature. There's no Photoshop, yeah. Google Draws is kind of a, a very simple, um, simple drawing tool, not like Photoshop. Do you wanna answer this question about originality reports there? Why only three originality reports? Does this reset each school year? Uh, it does reset each school year. The reason it's only three is because that's the version of Google Classroom that OUSD pays for. Okay. And then this looks like the same question as far as hiding old assignments. There's not the, the ability to do that, to actually hide or archive, but you can create an archive 
classroom. Yeah, Debbie mentioned topic. also in the chat that some teachers create a topic called old assignments and they change the completed assignments to that topic. So that's another workaround that. Uh, oh, Debbie that's a great idea. Mentioned. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, appreciate that, Debbie. Thank you. Can core teachers quickly copy and send their class list student emails to another teacher, such as a music teacher? I'm not sure, like if you can quickly copy. I mean, you you could, I guess, like you could just like kind of like do. You could probably just like copy, like if you go to your your classwork and then you go to your um, your people page. You could probably just like go down and and just copy those. Maybe I'm not sure if that would actually work, but. I would say the the easiest way might be just to make the the teacher a co-teacher. So you go to teachers and invite your invite um, the the teacher that you want to to be a co-teacher for that. That might be an, an easy way to do that. And it doesn't really it doesn't change the experience for students at all. Okay. And so last question that's on this document anyway. How do students receive the graded form? if their account doesn't have an email to receive it. So um, I think the question is, so like how, how are they actually receiving? They do not actually, I think the question is about emails, like elementary school uh, yeah, students Helen, that can I, email. Yeah. Can I, can I be clear that I'm Anusha, that's sure. that was my question. Okay. Um, I have been using Google Forms to give quizzes that I want to mm -hmm. grade. Yeah. And, um, I put time giving feedback and putting the score in, and then it says um, release grades, which to me yeah. makes it like students can see it. But when you click that, it says send and release. Yeah. And send is an email, and then I get an error in my email box saying all these email addresses are not accurate, are not real, because the yeah. S underscore for at least for elementary is not an email Google account. Yes. And then, so my students can't, I told them your, your scores are there. It says it's released and they can't find their scores and feedback anywhere. Even when they click on, they can go to their form, but they can't see it. They said, okay. So yeah, thanks for that question, Ms. Warda. So, um, yeah, I've had that experience also. So what, what I do is I just go ahead and release the grades and then yes, it is sending emails that just get bounced back because elementary students don't have email turned on. But if you go to, if you import um, in Google Classroom, if you import the, the, the grades, so that's basically, let's see, where was I? That, that quiz there. So I've got the quiz here. And let's see, view assignment. So if you import the grades, then that should make them, that should make them uh, show up over here. And so they should have their, in Google Classroom at least, they should be able to see their grades. But that doesn't show the feedback that I wrote for every question. That doesn't show the feedback that you wrote for every question. Mm, let's like see. In Google yeah. Forms, it's great. You can write mm -hmm. specific feedback to the kids on the problems that they did. Yeah. Um, but it won't show up here. This okay. will just be a raw score. Is that correct? Yeah. So as far as that feedback, so I would have to would have to look into that a little bit more and okay. find out. I, I feel like there's a way. I feel like when it, with my second graders. They were seeing some of that feedback, but um, yeah, but we would have to look into that a little bit more. Yeah. And I just would like to put a plug for um, elementary, at least fifth grade or fourth grade, getting to email accounts. I don't know who's in control of that, but mm -hmm. I'm having a really difficult way for my students to talk to me directly and yes. privately because they don't have email accounts and they can't wait for their parents or their parents are busy um, yeah. to try to go through them. Okay. Um, thank you. So yeah, so I can actually address that. So um, that is, so we have email turned off for elementary students for security reasons. It is possible um, to turn on to turn on um, internal email only. That, so that means that they would only be able to receive and send emails um, for OUSD. So if you uh, are interested in that, you should email the help desk about that. And I can also tell you, Ms. Warda, that that request was already made by your principal. And so that is pending right now. All right. Any other um, questions? Did we miss any other questions there? A handful of new ones. So one is that we're, our, I thought we were not supposed to grade students' work or can we now? I think we're not talking about grades like as grades. I think we're talking about grades more like as feedback. Right. right? Um, yes. Because, you know, yes, we are not grading students' work punitively. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, it can just be something. It can be something fun, just as kind of like a just see like see how much you know. You know, you can let let students know this is not part of your grade. This doesn't mean that this is going to be part of your report card. But just to find out, say this is just like a, a little bit of an a, an assessment, just got a knowledge check. Okay? Yeah. Just to find out what you what you know, how are you doing? And one option also is to let students take quizzes again. There is a setting for that, so you can let them retake so that they can um, end up just keep taking it until they get a perfect score if they want to. Yeah. Um, and then this says for elementary school students, emails are not compatible with Google Classrooms. I've invited a bunch of students via email. I think that goes back to kind of what Kellith was saying. They may not have email enabled. If you're inviting them via email and it's not working, that might be why. But otherwise they can use their uh, like school, the S underscore first name dot last name, they can use that to log in to Google. They don't need email for Google Classroom. That's right. Yes. Um, how can I stop comments for teachers and students in my email as a co-teacher and other teachers post? Oh my God, I'm in like 200 Google Classrooms as like a co-teacher at this point. And yeah. yeah, this is like the most important thing you can do. Here's the bad news. You can only turn on or off those things for like all of your classrooms that you're part of. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't, I can't turn it on for my class and have it off for another person's class. But yeah. where you do it is when you go to classroom.google.com, it's in the settings there. Yeah, let me show, let me actually show that to you. Okay, yeah. so right now I'm, I'm in, uh, this is kind of like a, a, let me just go, I'll go to the home page there. Okay, so you're on your home, your, this is your uh, home page here. Maybe you just have one classroom, maybe you have more. So this is settings over here, okay, where this is kind of like, it's, I don't know what's like a sidebar that opens up. You have to go all the way down. So it's kind of hidden there. So under settings there, you click on that, all right? And I've got mine turned off, right? Because same experience, uh, I was just getting tons, and because especially because I have so many classrooms. If you have it turned on, then you do have some options there, okay, as far as like what you're actually going to get. But like Sam was saying, you can't uh, make it specific for any particular classroom. Okay, so while I'm here, let me remember to turn that back off because I don't want to get all those emails. It would be but, a lot. Yeah, yeah, we do get a lot when every time that something's happening, get an email. And then there's one more question in the chat about post, the difference between post and assign. Um, when you are making a post in Google Classroom, right, like an announcement or a material, there's not necessarily a next step attached for students. When you're assigning something to students, right, you're asking them to do that assignment. Um, and that's sort of like the next steps are different, right, beyond just asking them to view it. Okay. Great. Um, did we, were we already answering this question? There's the one about just want to be sure because parents start to worry sometimes when they see that things are being scored. Oh, I think that's the follow up to the grading that's question. The follow up, yeah. Yeah, I would say maybe just uh, if you are using any kind of scores, I would say um, just just clarify to students and parents that this is not part of your grade. This is not part of your report card. Um, th this is just a, a knowledge check, just so you can check to see what you know. And I might recommend turning on that, re let students retake the quiz also. Yeah, and Gabrielle is kind of, I think, suggesting that we're being too blunt with our instrument in just turning off all the notifications and that if you scroll through those class notifications when you enable email notifications, you can be a little bit more yes. nuanced in how you get notifications. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're co-teaching in a Google Classroom, I think that is sort of between you and the teacher to decide where you post assignments and like what is most expected for your kids to look for, like where might they yeah most expect to look for things. Is that referring to that last question there? Do I, I yeah. co-teach, do I send assignments in my Google Classroom or to the other teacher's Google Classroom? Yeah. Yeah, you just need to kind of coordinate with your co-teacher there about how you're going to do that and make sure that you're not duplicating assignments. Okay, I think that's all of the questions, but if you do have additional questions, you could send an email to myself or Sam, we do get emails periodically and um, we'll make sure that we that we answer those questions and we will get this the recording posted here and remember that um, this the slideshow is available to you at that what is that um, 
it's the tiny, would you mind oh, posting that sorry. one more time? Just so yes, that we. Absolutely. Okay. Here. Here it is. Well, maybe there it will be. And then our emails also goes in. That's mine. And then. And then remember, if you need to make an appointment, that's actually, I'm actually really enjoying that meeting with people. And I feel like I'm able to give better help when, um, when I know, when I can talk to you. So feel free to make one of those appointments if you need some personal help with just your setup or, or um, any problems that you're having. Okay, so feel free, if we missed any questions, feel free to email us. Mm -hmm. And we're just about at the end here. So just going to officially um, close the meeting. Want to say thank you to all of you. Got yeah, thank you had, so much. We've had a really good turnout today. We were, were over 100 at one point there. So great seeing all of you and hearing from you and seeing you here. So uh, take care of yourself. Be safe. Be healthy. And uh, appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. It was very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the uh, detail explanations too. I also enjoyed that.